about five years ago, maybe it was six years ago, I was concluding a yoga class and started talking to a man named Gil Nichols. Now, Gil, uh, 72 years old at the time, and was doing two yoga classes a day. He would come in and do the 10 a.m. and the 4 p.m. So imagine what kind of shape this guy's in. And so we started talking, and Gil is a Native American historian. And I asked Gil some questions, and he started telling me about this idea of sacred clowns. Now, I'm going to get into it quickly. If you really want to read more about this and learn more about this, read. I have an entire chapter on this in my book, Happy This Year, which Daniel Byrne and I worked on together. Sacred clowns are part of what I call the triumph, triumphant rather, of Native American hierarchy. We all know about the chief in the Native American tribes. Most of us know about the medicine man because we've seen it in movies. And the medicine man was res responsible not only for the um, physical health of the tribe members, but also the spiritual health. So spend some time with that. Take that in. That's very meta metaphysical and very po powerful as well. The other thing, according to Gil Nichols, now this is Gil, if you go all over North America, you are going to find that all, this is according to Gil, Native American tribes have or have had, most still to this day have, what are called sacred clowns. In, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, the names of the Indian tribes are not coming to right now. Navajos call them Labayes. Hayokas is what they are called by the Plains Indians. Um, they all have a name. Uh, you will see this in the Dustin Hoff Hoffman movie, Little Big Man. He has this nemesis that he's always sort of, the nemesis is more concerned about him than he is about the nemesis. <coughs> Excuse me, but at one point the nemesis rides back in, the, the uh, antagonist, rides in backwards on a horse and he's painted black and white. The interesting thing about Hayokas or sacred clowns is they are always shown as being black and white in all cultures. Now, what is a sacred clown's job? Sacred clown. Take this in. They are not there to make you laugh. In fact, this idea of making people laugh with clowns is a modern concept within the last 100 to 200 years. Clowns were always tragic figures or considered to be like imps. They were there to tease you, taunt you, and mess with you. So, the way Gill puts it, the Native American historian, is that a sacred clown is there to mess with you until you become, I love this word, unmess withable. <sighs> Couple of decades ago, I went camping by myself for five weeks and I camped all the way up to uh, Halifax, New, uh, New Brunswick. And I, when I was up there, there is a beach where the tide comes in 25 feet every single day. And the beach is festooned with rocks and every single rock. In fact, I have three rocks that I picked up from there that I have kept now for 30 years. Every single rock on that beach is perfectly round. Now, why is that? It's round. It wasn't round to begin with. It was infinitely jagged. But being there with the swells of the sea, or rather with the tides going in and out 25 feet, the rocks get rolled back and forth until they ultimately get ground smooth. A sacred clown's job is to tease you, taunt you, and upset you until your rough edges are rolled off. Now, does that always happen? Absolutely not. Most people don't let their rough edges get rolled off. They like their rough edges. Thank you very much. It's their rough edges that have kept them safe, they believe. And so they eschew anything that is designed to make them improve by removing some of their rough edges. And we all have rough edges. Now, are there still sacred clowns? Yes, there are. In fact, I went and stayed in the home of um, two sacred clowns. Nowadays, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, men and women can be sacred clowns, have been for a while, and their job is still to go around and tease and taunt and mess with the people in the tribe. If you've got somebody who is, and they give examples, or Gil gave me examples from hundreds of years ago, of if not thousands, of the idea of if someone goes out and catches a bunch of fish and then they're building a fire, 
then the sacred clown would go and get the fish and feed them to the dogs, uh, just as a way of messing with the person so that they would not get upset. In other words, they would come to expect this sort of treatment. They would come to expect this sort of reality and they would develop ways of not allowing it to upset them. Why? Because they wanted to be as strong internally as they are externally. Now, why do I bring all this up? And by the way, it's a truly fascinating concept. Pick up my book, Happy This Year, and uh, read all about it. I, I go into quite a bit of detail, but the summary is still the same. And that is that the people in your life are your sacred clowns. Now, sacred, in other words, they are a divine gift to you. That's what the Native American tribes believe. These are not curses. These are not people you want to get rid of. By the way, Crazy Horse was a Hayoka, a, sa a sacred clown. Um, in the um, Plains Indians tradition, um, they believe that if you dreamed of thunder, then you would come out of your dream and immediately be assigned to a Hayoka. And in this case, it was Crazy Horse's uncle who uh, took him under his wing and taught him to be a, a sacred clown. The sacred clowns in your life, the divine clowns, are the people all around you. If you absolutely believe that you need to be wearing a mask and practicing social distancing, then the people who are not wearing a mask and are not practicing social distancing are your sacred clowns and vice versa. The question is, how much are you going to let their behavior upset you? And I got to tell you, it's not easy. I feel like, and I was talking to a friend yesterday about this, we're all ramped up and you know what I'm talking about. We're uncertain about the future. We're hearing that schools have to reopen, but given no direct direction as to how it's to be done. Here in the state of Florida, they're saying that schools absolutely have to be open, but they're leaving it to each individual district. So there's a lot of stress right now. And so people are just naturally more irritating. So I think the big question becomes, and it's a truly big question, can we become more calm? Can we become more understanding? And can we just write off the vagaries and the irritations of people as nothing more than that? Emerson said that the thing that's basically allows us, and I'm totally paraphrasing, I've got the book right here, but Emerson says that, uh, The ability people have to upset us comes from our weak curiosity. In other words, rather than jumping to a judgment, and I'm equally guilty of this as you all are. In fact, no, I would say I'm probably more guilty of this. And that's why I work so hard on all of this. That's why I have spent decades trying to clean out the junk in my trunk and help other people do it as well. And for me, uh, this this irritation was so easy, quick, and natural. And now to develop a, I wonder why they're acting that way. I wonder why they're feeling that way. Then we don't personalize their behavior, and then it does not upset us. And by the way, before there was masking and not masking, there was something else that was upsetting you. There was a, as I've said before, talked about yesterday, an us and a them. So there's always going to be someone who is upsetting you with the idea of rolling your rock to get rid of the rough edges. That's what I truly believe that's what life is designed for. If you want to say if there's a meaning for life, I believe we deserve, we define our meaning through service to other people, through trying to take whatever natural gifts and talents we have and giving them away or bartering uh, in the uh, market of free trade for their distribution. However, I think that the, the, the soul's purpose, the purpose of our soul is to grind off those rough edges. And the only way we know we have rough edges is other people. It's other people. Other people help us know when we are upset. They are our sacred 
clown. So what if today, hypothetically, you just began to look at anyone and everyone who upset you and see them with a mixture of white and black paint on their face and horns on their head like a devil and fur coming off like this little Hayoka uh, statue. That, by the way, that sits on my altar. That was a gift to me. Someone gave me. And uh, it is a, a true Kachina doll, which is uh, very rare and very expensive. And it is a sacred clown. So see the people in your lives. And I always want to close with this because this is the number one question. I, when I speak professionally, this is one of the topics people like me to address, especially in a work environment, to let them know that other people just are going to bring up their stuff, etc., and to remind them that it is their stuff. The number one question people ask me is, or they'll say if they're being honest is, um, I don't know how to say this, but my spouse, the person who irritates me most is my spouse. Are they my sacred clown? And I always like to say, God, I hope so. They're supposed to be. Your spouse is there to bring your stuff up and at the same time, love you through healing it. To me, that's an ideal relationship. Interspersed with lots of joy and laughter and watching movies and making love and, and going out to dinner and walking on the beach and all kinds of stuff. So, I want you to realize you are surrounded not by a-holes, just thought I'd be blunt there for a second, but sacred clowns. You are there surrounded by people who are designed to bring up your own stuff so you can heal it. The question is, are you choosing to heal it? Are you doing this deep spiritual work to own it and to realize where it comes from within yourself so that you can let it go? That's our, that's our true challenge and that's our blessing from our sacred clowns. Let's catch up with what some of you all are saying. And uh, before we close, there's Lisa Bartell. She says, top of the morning. Who else is new? Anybody would like new? Just read this in your book. How about that? And happy this year. Ed Wilmot says, as a teenager and a young adult, I used alcohol and drugs to smooth out the rough edges in my life. It was a poor substitute. It was a coating, not a smoothing agent. The sharp edges just kept getting worse. I had to quit drinking and embrace society to have the rough edges be vulnerable to the rolling caused by life's own sacred clowns. Ed, we could leave it there. That's a beautiful summary. I have a very good friend who has built a hundred million dollar business and he only hires people who are actively practicing uh, recovery. Um, he just goes out of his way. I don't think only, but I would say 80% of his workforce is. And these are people who are messed up. And you know what? They're working on it actively. Um, there's a lot of messed up people who aren't, who aren't allowing their rough edges to be worked off. So Ed, I salute you. I salute you. So your vulnerability and your inspiration to us all. Thank you. Your edges are differently rounded from the story about the dry cleaner with your shirts. Thank you, Denise. You know what? I would agree with that, that I never got upset when the dry cleaner literally held my shirt, uh, shirts hostage and then charged me. And by the way, I went in to dispute the charge and I chose not to do it. I chose not to do it because had I gone in and read the reviews in Google of that dry, uh, dry cleaner, I would have seen tons of warnings and I would have never done it. And I consider it what, uh, uh, what's his name? Dave Ramsey calls stupid tax. So I paid my stupid tax of about 40 bucks and moved on. Mine is absolutely my best mirror, says Liz Schmidt. Great. First time on here. Love what you had to say. Everybody celebrate Deborah. <laughs> Deborah, hooray for Deborah. Everybody send Deborah hugs and love. We're glad Deborah's here. Yay. I just saw myself on delay doing that little dance. Welcome, says everybody. First time here. Andrea's here for the first time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got to put back up my little welcome first timers banner here that I threw up together this morning. I actually want to do something a little nicer than that. Andrea, glad to hear have you here. We are living in a true test of change and to evolve. We should consider living in the present moment and know we are growing. My great spiritual coach right there, Jerome Johnson. 
Just nailed it. I love it. You guys are awesome. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. And so great to have you here as first timers or any timers. Ideally, we'll have you here as every timers. I'll be here every single time live. And by the way, I said yesterday, I don't know if I mentioned it here, but I did in our meditation group that I would be gone on Monday and recording remotely. And then it doesn't matter. I'm going to be here. I will be here. I will be live and I look forward to seeing you. And I will be here tomorrow morning at eight o'clock Eastern time and tomorrow morning. And I've always, <laughs> you think I would prep this before, but it gives you all a chance to make your parting comments before we leave. So yesterday we talked about Scheidenfreude. That was fun. Oh, I've got it. And this is a great tie in. Today, I want to talk about calm versus controlled, or tomorrow, rather. I'm going to talk about remaining calm rather than remaining controlled. There's a video going around right now of a man in Costco who just absolutely lost his mind when he was asked to wear a face mask, and he ultimately got fired from his job. So he was neither calm nor controlled. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Cynthia Barser says, great message. Thanks. Welcome, Andrea. And Debbie, Deborah says, Michelle, I'll be doing meditation on repeat. See you all tomorrow morning. Awesome, Lisa. It's so great to see you. Love your hairstyle. Welcome. Glad you have joined us. Everybody be sure and share so we can get lots more Andreas. And uh, who else was it? I'm sorry. I'm not going to leave now until I see the other person's name because it'll drive me crazy. I, I Oh, Deborah, that's right. Yeah, okay. All right, everybody, enjoy today, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Careful of your sacred clown. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more.